have a seat so that we can begin our 1030 worship service. Again, good morning, Mount Olive. If everyone can have a seat so that we can begin our 1030 worship service and our youth can go ahead and march in. Blessed wonderful name of G. Come on, blessed Jesus. Oh, blessed wonderful name of For there is no other name. Oh, blessed wonderful name of Oh, blessed wonderful name of Come on, blessed that wonderful name of For there is no other name Clap your hand Well, there is power in the name of ye. Well, there is power in the name of There is power in the name of And there is no other name Oh Power in the name of There is power in the name of G. There is power in the name of For there is no other name Deliverance in the name of There is deliverance in the name of There is deliverance in the name of and there is no other name. Well, there is healing in the name of. There is healing in the name of. There is healing in the name of. 
and there is no other name. Oh, healing in the name of. Uh, there is so much healing in the name of. Well, there is healing in the name of. And there is no other name. Not only that, but deliverance in the name of. There is deliverance in the name of. There is deliverance in the name of. And there is no other name. Oh, bless that wonderful name of. Come on, bless that wonderful name of. Everybody ought to bless that wonderful name of. And there is no other name. Uh, what's his name, Jesus? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. It's a wonderful name. Uh, it's a wonderful name. Uh, that's healing in his name. That's healing in his name. Deliverance in his name. Deliverance in his name. Uh, that's joy in his name. That's joy in his name. Uh, that's joy in his name. Uh, that's joy in his name. Uh, I love to call him. Uh, I love to call him. I love to call him. Uh, I love to call him. The more I call him, uh, the better I feel. Uh, the more I call him, uh, the better I feel. Uh, I love to call his name. Uh, I love to call his name. His name is wonderful. Uh, his name is wonderful. Uh, it soothes my doubt. Um, it soothes my doubt. Um, and it calms my fear. Um, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on and help me call him. Um, 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 who woke you up this morning? Who woke you up this morning? Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way out? Who started you on your way Hey, mama didn't do it. Hey, daddy didn't do it. Oh, sister couldn't do it. Oh, your brother couldn't do it. Nobody but Jesus. 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 Pray the name of Pray the name of Jesus. 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 Help me call him. Come on, clap your hand. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Demons tremble. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Every knee but bow. Every knee should bow. Every tongue confess. Every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. And there is no other name I know. Come on, clap your hand for Jesus. That's what we do, clap your hand for Jesus. Open your mouth and give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Somebody shout Jesus. Come on, shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. 
Who woke you up? Who woke you up? Who saved you? Who healed you? What's his name? What's his name? Come on, lift your hands in here. Come on, lift your hands in here. Jesus. Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Can you help me sing that one time? Oh, oh, oh uh, Jesus, come on, sing. Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name, at the mention of your name. Every knee shall bow and tongue proclaim Jesus, Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Let's do it one more time. Lift your hands and your voices and sing Jesus, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow and tongue proclaim, Jesus, Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, you sing. You're the only living God. Sing. You're the only. Um, say it again. Oh, oh, you're the only living God. Come on, say it again. Oh, oh you're the only living God. That's it. One more time, you're the only living God. Now tell him, and we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. and we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we, praise you. we adore you. We adore you and adore you. We adore you. We love you. We love you. Anybody love Jesus? We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we love you. We love you. And we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee shall bow and tongue proclaim Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus. You are Savior, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are. Now lift your hands in here. Lift your hands, everybody. Come on, lift your hands. And just begin to pray the name of Jesus. Come on, pray the name of Jesus. Come on, pray the name of Jesus. Everybody, young and old, pray the name of Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name. Pray the name. Kings and kingdoms 
shall all pass away, but there's something about that name, oh, king and kingdom, that means everything, shall all pass away. But there's something about that name. One more time with me. Oh, King and Kingdom shall all pass away. But there's something about. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us on this magnificent Sunday. Dear Lord, thank you for praising everybody in this house, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here so we can learn your Lord, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here so we can hear pastors, Lord. Word, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing everyone, touch everyone's heads, Lord. Dear Lord, touch every soul in this house, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here every day, Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here every Sunday, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. of visitors by Sky Davidson. Good morning, Round Olive. May all visitors please stand. Thank God for our Mount Olive family. And thanks. You're appreciated more than you'll ever know. A special thanks to the Mount Olive members who are not stewardness that helped to make our day for Christmas in September. Much love, Ruby Burnett, Chairperson and Committee, Minerva Green Stewardness Ministry. Sister Tamika Fountain Coney, would you please come forward?
Would all youth, would all Mount Olive youth please stand? Would all Mount Olive youth and their parents please stand? Don't you start crying. Today, the youth and the parents would like, <laughs> would like to let Tamika know <laughs> just how much she is appreciated by our young people and our parents, and especially me. But I was going to change my number, but since you are going out as... <laughs> <laughs> the conference director, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> we love you, Tamika. Thank you. So, since we have a partner in crime, she can come forward as well. Trenisha. Don't beat me up. We want to say we love you and we appreciate you as well. So I don't have to change my number for you either. Um, because this is, will be my last at your conference, I want to personally thank my church family because if it wasn't for you all, being sometimes way in the background to make sure that you help me to get things done from Mr. Grimmage to every, I mean, pulling stuff out, the storage for us. You have certainly made my eight years, eight years, <laughs> eight long years, <laughs> um, you've made it a journey. You've helped me through this journey and it takes a village. It truly takes a village to raise our children and I'm happy to have my village right here at the Mount. And so I thank you, I love each of you and pray much, pray much, continue to pray because we're gonna keep it going here right at the Mount, amen. amen. I'm going to get Wanda. She told me to get Tamika. <laughs> now we will have the Ministry of Music by the Mount Olive Youth Choir. <laughs> Thank you. 
what a wonderful change that has come over me. My, my Lord. Come on, give them another hand. Praise the Lord. We got youth in the choir. We got youth that are ushering. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, give them a hand. We got enough young folk to do all of it. Amen. And if one of the ushers got a voice and want to sing sometime, we can we can rotate it around. Somebody in the choir want to usher sometime. We can rotate and train folks so they know how to do it all. Come on, give that a hand. How I many folk know that God is able? Our Sunday school lesson taught us today not to doubt what God can do but to believe in beyond our own sight. Just because you can't see you doing it, don't equate God with your failure. Because mm, he's able to do what you can't do. Matter of fact, that's why he told you to do something you can't do so he can do it through you. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to thank you, O oh God, for your word. And so, coming to receive the word, God, we ask that you use what you created and speak to what you made. Then, oh God, help us to be receptive to what you say, obedient to what you will, and thankful for what you've done. In Jesus' name, uh, let us say amen. Uh, put your hand together and bless the Lord. Thank you so much for the blessings of the Lord uh, today. I want to speak to this this morning from the gospel according to Mark. Amen. That's a pretty good name. Y'all know that? Amen. Praise be to the Lord. So Y'all don't tell me I ain't somebody my name in the Bible. Amen. Y'all can tell me that's the other Mark, but that's still my name. Praise be to the Lord. I want to take your attention to our uh, fifth chapter, Mark, verse 15. Listen at what it says. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. I want to speak to you from the subject, time for a breakout. And today I want to talk about the restoration power of God in our lives. And I want us to know that God is able to restore us from all things. You know, you can get so far in sin that you give up. And you think you just stuck there for the rest of your life. Matter of fact, the devil will convince you that you can't get out. Mm. Um, and and uh, the devil will convince you that you got to be in what you're in for the rest of your life. He'll even convince you that you don't even need to get out. And you all right where you are. As wrong as you are. And so, but God, how many folk know that God is able to do all things? And no condition is too great for God to deal with. As a matter of fact, that's why Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And remember he said in there, he allowed Lazarus, Lazarus, he got the report that Lazarus was sick while he was still alive. And he went on to work and let him die. Because he wanted Lazarus to get to the utmost before he ever moved and not only did he let him die but he let him stay dead for four days and at that time no person had ever come back that they were considered dead for four days 
because about four days the body has started decaying. And that's why it smells because it's decaying. You dead and gone then. And so he allowed Lazarus to stay dead for 10 days, four days before he went to see about it. But when he went to see him and called him, he brought him back. Now, and watch this. And when he come out the grave, he wasn't stinking at all. He didn't bring a stink dead man out. He brought him out with no stink on him. He totally restored his life. Mm. Not partially, he completely restored his life. Mm. And, so, and so God wants us to know that his restoration is complete. The enemy wants us to think that out of God can't do it or he's a part-time God. Or he one of them God that it takes time. You know how people love to say, well, God working on me. You're just making excuses. Because God has already done his work and you don't want to turn your stuff loose. I'm a work in progress. You'll work on your way to hell. That's what you are. Because God has already, the Bible said he's already done. He said the victory has already won. Battle already been fought. He didn't even, de he didn't already, he didn't, he didn't uh, de-arm your enemies. Yeah, and we say, God, and I know I got this song, he will, and yes, he will, but we need to say he already has. Yes, he did. He's already done it. We just have to receive it and walk in it. And the enemy will hold us into bondage. I remember when I was a young boy on the altar, uh, calling on the, uh, on the morning bench, calling on the Lord. See, nobody sat on that bench holiday now. Nah, nah. Yeah. Uh, but I was asking God to forgive me, but later on I found out when I began to understand the scripture that he'd already forgiven me. And all I needed to do was to accept what he had done. And I was waiting on him to do what he'd already done. And he was waiting on me to, to accept what he'd already done. Mm. And so the restoration power of God is there for all of us. But we got to be willing to receive it. So today I want to talk to us about a man who needed a breakout. That was in a bad place in a bad situation. We know the story of this man. Uh, and, and, and so Jesus, uh, uh, after he had gone over across the water, then across the lake, one of the first things he met was a man possessed with a demon. Now, the first thing about the man, the problem is he abided in a dead place. The Bible said he lived in the tombs. And the problem with us sometimes was we dwell in dead places. We hang around with dead folk and we do dead things. Now, first of all, anybody that have not accepted Christ in their life is dead. That's why you said you are born again. They're the walking dead and just don't know they're dead. Uh, and, 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 and so, and, and anybody who know Christ and ain't living for Christ is in zombie land. And so, so what happened is, sometimes we, we, and the reason why is we come up like that. Most of our young adult life, we spend as much time as we can around dead places with dead folk doing dead things and stuff that cause death. We didn't want to go to church. Our parents had to make us go to church. Most of us, the truth be told, didn't like going to church. They told us, you going. Yeah, we had good parents. They, they, they did the parents and do you want to go? No, I don't want to go to no church. What makes you think I want to go to church? Yeah, all right. And so, 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 so what happened is we learned to do stuff that caused death. And we learned to love it. But we have to come to the understanding to stop dwelling in a dead place. Not only did he dwell in a dead place, but he got into self-mutilization. The Bible said that he would cr cut himself. Mm. And, 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 and what it is is we live in a world in self-destruction. 
we hurt ourselves more than anybody else hurt us. We find all of the wrong things to do. Mm. Our young folk are caught up with people who are caught up in death. Everybody want to be tatted down. Because LeBron James tatted down. Because Lil Wayne tatted down. And Lil Wayne now, I mean, you ever seen what he used to look like? He looked like somebody threw him away now. I'm serious. He done, he done ink all over himself. And what he done do, it done tattooed all over God, masterpiece. Hmm. And, and, and so, and, and, and so, and from that, then we into piercing everything. Ears ain't good enough no more. Nose ain't good enough no more. They pierce stuff I can't even talk about. You got a pierce here and a pierce there. Holes all in their bodies. And some of them wear them and big old holes in their ear and put the lobes in there. Yeah. And it's going further and further. But it's self-mutilation. God ain't, ain't, that's why he gave you paper to draw on the paper and then not on your body. Yeah, see, yeah, they look like somebody threw him away. Now, and if you look at sometimes some old pictures of Lil Wayne, and if he wasn't wealthy, he'd be in a bad situation. Yeah, because he had drunk so much that that call served was about to kill him. So, so, so what happens is in, when you abide in a dead place, you do things that cause death because you act like dead folk. They decay. They don't live, they decay. And a place of death would give you a spirit of death. You want to kill folk, and, and you slowly kill yourself. And thank you, live in large. And so uh, he abided in a dead place. The second thing that he did was he allowed him, he allowed, aligned himself with the power of God. The Bible says that. He was unrestrictable. Could nobody restrict him. They tie ropes to him and he pop them off. They tie chains on him and he'll pop the chain. But he was popping them through the power of God. And how many people blow up through the power of God? Thank you some because you use it demonic power to override folk in the neighborhood. The devil giving you anointing uh, and, and taking your anointing and using it to hurt folk. You the baddest thing in the neighborhood. Everybody's scared of you. Mm. If everybody's scared of you, it's because something's wrong with you. When you walk down the street, they go to the other side. And you think you bad. I make a move for me. They get out of my way. They move because they know you ain't got no sense. They moving because they know you might do anything. You may get up there and say, I'm just going to shoot you today. Boom. And so they, and you move out of the way of fools because you don't know what they're going to do. But the fools think he's the big son. Hmm. Anything that won't be restricted is demonic. And anything that won't be restricted will not go into the presence of God. Hmm. And, and, and that's what Satan wants us to live unrestricted lives I do what I want to do it's my thing I do what I want to do y'all remember that mm -hmm. yeah and then, you, then after you got through singing that you're talking about I'm going to do it till I'm satisfied mm -hmm. but do you know you can't satisfy demons Yeah, I drank a I drank a, a a a pint of liquor this weekend. Next weekend, the devil say you got to drink a quart. The next weekend, the devil say you got to drink a fifth. 
And I've seen people do that. I remember when I was coming up, a guy, the guy in the drinking contest, and he drunk a whole fifth of liquor. Then turned it loose till the bottle was empty. And he walked off a little piece and fell, boom, and never got up again. It bust his heart. And, and the devil got young folk out there now trying all kind of dare stuff with this cinnamon thing and everything come along, try this. They got one there to put themselves on fire and, 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 and put this stuff on them like they them musicians or something and let it burn and burning themselves up. All kind of truth or dare. And, 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 and people are just going along with whatever folks say. And now young folk, are, everybody is vaping. Yeah, they took the cigarettes away so they can go and buy them a vapor machine. And they're vaping up. And they're vaping killing folk. Creating health issues. People, and they, 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 they vape and then go to the hospital. They got some long ailment that people ain't never heard of. And just because they put it in some colors and they put some, some, some uh, fruity flavors in it. It's because the devil sweetened up his poison. Don't stop it from being poison. Yeah. So, 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 anything unrestrictable, broken restraints, that's what's wrong with our society. Don't nobody want to keep any promises. Don't nobody want to live by commitment. Don't nobody want to hold to the responsibility of the relationship. Everybody want the joy of relationship, but no responsibility. They want, yeah, men want full faithful wives, but they don't want to be faithful. Women want faithful husbands, but they don't want to be faithful. Yeah, what kind of foolishness is that? That's demonic. And they got some, don't even care out there. They just swing all kind of ways. No restrictions. And we're getting to the point where we'll try about anything. And so the Bible also said that nobody could tame him. Mm. Nobody. Which means that he was living rebellious. Not following orders. Not following rules. He making up his own rules. And he gotten so bad that could nobody even come in the cemetery. Folk come in the cemetery, he attack them. Hmm, he living in the graveyard. And he won't let people in the graveyard. And then finally, he allowed demons to speak for him. He didn't even speak for himself anymore. He had got to the point where his voice was, was hushed. And the demons were the one doing the talking. Because when Jesus met him, Jesus said, who are you? And he said, my name is Legion, because we are many. He ain't even speaking in the singular vernacular anymore. He's speaking in the vernacular of a whole lot of voices. Because the Bible said that he had, he was many demons in him. And a legion has thousands of troops in a legion. So he got thousands of demons in him, all talking for him. And the problem with folk today is they letting the devil talk to them. The man that just killed his wife and four children. You ain't nobody but the devil telling him. Demons talking for him. The guy, the football player, Brown, Anthony Brown. He already in trouble and he has the chance to go to a new team, redeem himself. The DA even said, I'm not going to even investigate it. But the devil tell him, text her. Tell her she better stop messing with you. And he's stupid enough to listen and text her when he could have got by with the whole thing. Went on with another team, could have done the random moss, the bad boy who now commentator. God said, yeah, I know you've been a little on the bad side, but you got to get some sense sometime. But he gets stupid and threatened the lady, and now they cut $9 million, went down the drain just like that. Because can't nobody tame him, and he letting demons talk for him. 
And you know this nut got a church in his house? In his house. Built a 15,000 foot house and got a church in the middle of it. And still don't know no better. Wow. Hmm. And one of the things is, and right in the middle of it, he got this star of David in there, which he think he doing something, but don't realize the star of David is a demonic star. It's really not the star of David. It's the star of Solomon, who issued witchcraft and idolatry in Israel in his old age, which is why the Jewish nation is in the trouble they're in now. And over their country, they're flying the flag of the star of David on their flag, which has nothing to do with God. Their symbol was not the star of David. It was the, the, uh, the symbol of the lampstand that sat in the house of God, in the temple of God, seven-tiered lampstand. And they switched it over for this star of David, which is a witchcraft star symbol. It's a sign designed to put hexes on people. <laughs> so he allowing demonic forces to speak for him. That's why you can't run out and tell you everything. That's why I tell you you need to come to Bible study. That's why I say you need to study to show that self-approval, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you know the, the lies and the falseness that the enemy trick us with. And so he let demons speak for him. And they spoke disassociation with God. What did the demons say? Oh, son of, uh, uh, son of God, we don't have anything to do with you. And the devil wants you to think you have nothing to do with God. He'll tell you, don't go to church. Don't listen to that preacher. Don't listen to your parents. Don't pray to God. Don't read your Bible. He'll try to tell you to disassociate with all the things of God. Like the prodigal son left home because he listened to the wrong voices. Your dad ain't doing you right. They restricting you right. You can be having a good time. Everybody else out there making it rain and they in the VIP club. You got all this money, your daddy, but he ain't going to let you do none of that. Mm -hmm. And when the boy got out there and started doing all of that stuff, he found out it wasn't all that it was cranked up to be. Yes. Mm. You know the group called The Temptation is one of the most well-known singing groups that has ever been. Do you know The Temptations had more disaster in their group than just about any other one? One of them got killed and got shot and paralyzed about his own car. Man was trying to steal his car and shot him about his car paralyzed another one uh, uh, the lead singer got killed and jacked over the money he had in his pocket because he's out there on drugs and was thrown outside the road another one committed suicide killed himself and just all through the group there was one bad situation after another one mm. yes and then there's another group with young folk, two groups I want to mention. One called, what was, that group? What was uh, New Edition. New Edition was the most gifted group put together since the Jackson Five. And they imploded because they had some bad idea and mindset. All of them wanted to be stupid crazy. Yeah. And, and even though they had all of that giftedness, never achieved all of they could do. Now, do you know what the, 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 the most successful singing group is? Was four guys called Boys to Men. They are the most successful young group that has ever been far more successful than New Edition. And, I, and if you'll notice their songs in their videos, all they women ain't naked and half naked. 
they dress like normal folks sometimes wearing suits or like guys just chilling. They ain't acting like they all this in the bag of chip. They, they the king on the throne and 20 women around them. But their songs touch people all over this nation. You ain't got to be bad to be good. And you ain't got to be demonic to be successful. If you got giftedness that God gave you, let it take you to where you need to be. Mm. And then you can get there and stay there when you get there. Mm. Antonio Brown is probably the best receiver in the NFL, but nobody wants him on the team. Mm. With all his giftedness, his stupidity, then create him a problem. Mm, my, my God. Two teams have released him in the same year. My, my God. Because, not because he don't have the talent, but because folks say, I don't want that foolishness. Satan will try to set you up to bring your foolishness rather than let God lift you up. And, 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 and so, and, 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 and what happened is, don't let the devil speak for you. They used to have a, a song when I was a boy said, don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. And he'll turn your life around. Don't let him ride. Yeah, hallelujah. They had a program called the Don't Let the Devil Ride program. So don't let him speak rebellion in your life. Don't let him speak against your God. Don't let him speak against your upbringing. Now the man that was in there, uh, in the tombs, he was bad till he met Jesus. Now, now ain't nothing better than God. Yeah, and ain't been nobody better than Jesus. Now, he was running everybody out the tomb, but when he met God, the, he went and ran to worship him. Now, I want you to understand, it wasn't the demons worshiping, but the man on some on the inside, when he saw Jesus, even though he'd been suppressed, even though he'd been bound, even though he'd been shut up, it was something in his spirit knew his God. And even with them thousand demons pulling against him, uh, he ran to worship his God. My, my, my God. And, and, and so, so what you got to understand, I don't care what your flesh want to do, you got to tell your flesh, we going to church. We going to get on our knees. We going to pray. We going to call on the Lord. Yeah, my, my God. We going to tell God. And young folk, I've been there too. I tell you, I ain't always been no preacher. I've been in the club too. I, I used to love the club. But I learned to pray even in the club. Yeah, and I got to the point that when I was in the club, no matter where I went, I was going to take some time to sit down and pray. And I had a many people shake me, say, you all right? And I wouldn't say a word to them till I get through praying. They be shaking me. They think I done got hooked on some drugs or some foolishness or stuff. You all right? And then when I get through praying, I tell them, yeah, I'm all right. Then someone asked me, what you doing? I'm praying. You praying? Yes, I'm praying. Yeah, I was in the juke, but I was praying in the juke. Yeah, you got to learn to call on God. I was in a dead place, but I prayed in the dead place. And that man learned to worship God even in the graveyard. I got plenty of demons in there, and I'm in a bad place. As a matter of fact, I'm in a dead place, but I see my master. You got to know God when you see him. I don't care what condition you're in. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care how much the devil got his wraps on you. I don't care how many dog chains he got on you. When God comes along, you got to recognize him. I might have been bad, but I see my God. Uh, and I learned to pray in the club. Uh, all right, somebody may say, well, that don't work. It worked for me. I ain't in there no more. Uh, Rather than in the club, I'm in the pulpit. And when I leave here, I don't go to the club behind your back. I go straight to the house. Ain't that lady sitting right over there where I go? My, my God, Jesus. And, 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 and so, so, so you got to recognize Jesus. And so Jesus went to work for the man. After the legion said, we are many. He said, you got to get out of my child. <laughs> you come on up out of him. And the devil said, but hold on, because see, the, the devil's told him, yeah, say, don't torment us. <laughs> I'm finna do more than that. You getting out of my child. Because see, devils don't like to be in the void. Because in the void, they ain't got nobody to feed off of. Devils feed off of you. They feed off your anointing. They know you anointed. 
and they are drawn to you. Yeah, they come at you when you're children. They come at you when they send you off to school. Yeah, demons sent folk to get me into demonic forces. Mm. And the folk were getting mad with them when they couldn't get me in it. Mm. Demons sent folk after me that got converted trying to get mm, my, my, my car. Mm. Ah, because of the anointing was on my life. Mm. And so the devil said, I can't let him go to be what he going to be because I know what you made him to be. So I got to stop him while he's young. And many of you, the enemy, trying to stop before you get there. But God has put an anointing in your life. And don't let no devil take it away. Don't let no devil turn you around. Yeah, so what you do some stuff you don't need to be. Learn how to repent and do better. Oh, my, my God. And, and, and so what had happened was uh, he, he, uh, he cast the man out and sent him into pigs. You don't need to be in my child going to the hogs. And guess what? The hogs didn't even want them. The, the pigs ran down the hill and drowned themselves. Said, we'd rather be dead than for y'all to be in us. My, my Lord. You know, if the dog, if a pig don't want them, you sure ought not to want them. Because a pig will lay in slop. A pig will lay in the mud. But, but, but God says, you ought to be with me. And then after he healed the man, the folk came to see the man. Because all of a sudden, he done disappeared. And guess what? He had a buddy out there in the graveyard with him. And God healed him too. Y'all got buddies with you. And God said, not only will I deliver you, but I'll deliver your buddy too. <laughs> you just tell him my name. Every so often tell your buddy about me. And I'll heal him too. I'll heal her too. My, my God. And so what happened to man, they found him. And when they saw him, he was sitting at the feet of Jesus, which means that he was learning about the Lord. He'd gone to church. My, my Lord. He left the club and went to church. He stopped hanging on the corner and went to church. Uh, he used to be the man out on the corner, slinging drugs, but now he in the church house. Yeah, he, yeah. My, my, my Lord. He done laid down his Glock. And he got a bow of my, my Lord. He's still strapped, but he got a different scrapping now. Mm. Rather than the tech nine or the ten, yeah, he's strapped mm, with the word of God. My, my Lord. And he found ammunition in the word that he ain't never seen before. My, my, my Lord. You let somebody roll up on me. I cut loose with a word. Ha. My, my Lord. And the word go to flying everywhere. Demons go to flying up out of there. We got to get up out of him. He know the word of God. Y'all think I'm playing, but the demons will. I done had them to try me. Mm, and I done had to bring it. And they had to get up out of there. Y'all better leave him alone. My, my Lord. Mm, yeah, and, and you see, I don't worry about the Jehovah Witness coming to my house. Yeah, because if they come after a while, the supervisor going to tell them, don't go there no more. Because mm -hmm. they go to telling the supervisor the stuff I done told them. They come back and tell me. They said they told me not to come see you no more. <laughs> Yeah. But you see, they come to tell me that the supervisor told them, don't come back no more. But it was something good they heard. I told them, come on in and have a seat. Now. You want to talk about the world? Yeah, yeah. You want some Kool-Aid? I got some lemonade. They be shocked. They don't know how to act. I tell them, well, you walked in the, uh, the house of a child of God. What you expect? My, my Lord. And when they go to talking about the word, I talk about the word too. Yeah, let's reason in the word. And boy, and by the time then, then they come back again, they want a little bit more. Hmm. And they want a little bit more. And they got to go tell the supervisor what they're trying to tell me. Yeah. And after a while, everybody doesn't go bother him no more. Because if you go bother him no more, you're going to be in his church. My, my God. See, you ain't got to worry about folk if you know what you got. If you know what you got, just tell them. I, I, you got to know how to explain Jesus to him. Come there talking about I got a three-headed God. No, I got a God that's got three personalities. But you got to understand, I'm talking about God, not just a man. You're talking about the God can make all the universe. And, it, and you think he can't exist in three personalities? Then they want to talk about he's schizophrenic because he talked to himself. No, he God. Huh? See, when you're God, you can talk to yourself. My, my, my God. 
And so, so what you got to know is, uh, but you got to get at the feet of Jesus if you're going to be like, that means you're humble under him. You're learning about him. You're learning about his ways. You want to know how to live for him. You want to know how to serve him. He was at the feet of Jesus. Secondly, he was closed in his right mind. And just to be frankly honest with you, many folk out there done lost their mind to the devil. They don't even know who they are anymore. They got new names. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I got a friend like that. Yeah, he had a name. His name was Civil Dollar. Yeah. Yeah, he's slinging drugs all over town. Yeah, he the man. Yeah. But he got shot. And on the table, he died. I mean, he died, he died. They even covered him. And they was getting ready to put the toe tag on him. And as they were getting ready to put the tag on his mama was praying. That's why Mama Brown keep praying. Yeah, that's why, yeah, that's why she cut up in church. Because when her son was laying there, and they done, they done wrote him off, he did. Huh. She said, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. She kept praying. And they went back and checked them again. They found the pulse. But here's what it is. Silver Dollar had to die before Reverend Stovall could live. Mm. What's in you got to die before God's child, God's servant can live? Mm. My, my Lord. Yeah. Uh, there's some stuff in me had to die before Pastor Crutcher could live. And I'm glad it did. And I let it stay dead. I don't go out there to the graveyard trying to do no autopsies. Hmm. Yeah. Trying to resurrect something that need to stay dead. Hmm. And when somebody tried to remind me, yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean he was? I'm talking about you. No, he was. The person you know don't even live no more. Yeah. You, you got it. The Bible says you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. They went looking for a possessed man. They found a man in his right mind. They found a man with the spirit of God in him. And found a man that wanted to be with God. And then he pleaded with God, let me just stay with you. Let me go where you go. And the Lord said, no, I need you to go back home. And I need you to tell the story. Because you know when Jesus did this, they put Jesus out of town. Yeah, the, the folk in town told him, you got to leave. Because you got something we don't know how to deal with. So Jesus said, you go back and tell the folk in your town what I did for you. Go give your testimony. Tell it everywhere, all over town. And the man went back telling his testimony. And the same folk that put Jesus out, when Jesus came back, they was ready to receive him. The Bible said he prepared them. God got some for you. And he can fully restore you, but you got to go all the way with it. Mm. You're going to sell out for something. Might as well be God. Young folk, you look all over the house, you'll find X sub. Because all of us have seen it and come short of the glory. But we learn to give up what Satan brought in our lives to discover what God had for us. And we are living in the restoration of God. And that's why we don't mind singing, I've been redeemed. <laughs> it's our testimony mm -hmm. that it ain't about my goodness, but it's what God has brought into my life. And God has restored us mm -hmm, to be what he want us to be. And I say to all of us, if you haven't found it, find that restoration and find out what God wants you to be. If you think you're something in the world, you wait till you find out what God wants you to be. My, my, my Lord. Yes. I thought I used to could handle things until I found Jesus. Then I began to realize I can speak and stuff move just because I spoke. I speak and demons have to back off because of my mm. 
I've spoken and death have to back off just at my word. Since I've been walking in restoration, I've laid my hands on folk that the doctor say, huh, I don't, they ain't gonna make it. Mm, but God said so. There's a presiding elder right now over in the Florida conference, still a presiding elder. That guy in the hospital, his heart was shutting down, lungs were shutting down, kidney had shut down. His brain was shutting down. They'd done two operations on there, swollen, and, and they were about to do the third. The doctor came to us. We was in there, uh, in the room, the group praying. He said, ain't nothing else I can do. He said, so y'all might as well go in and see what you can do. And they let us in the IC unit. Mm. And we went in and had church. We went in and took that all and anointed him in the name of Jesus. And we act like we was a Sunday morning church. We made all kind of noise in that hospital that night. Uh, and we prayed till we called on the Lord and asked God to restore him. And then we came out of that and we sat in the waiting room. Early that morning they came to us. The doctor said, I don't know what you did, but it worked. His heart started back beating. His kidney went to functioning. His liver went back to functioning. His brain went to going down. And we went to praising our God. God said, I'll lift you up and I'll give you glory. I'll restore to you everything the canker worm took away from you. I'll give it back. And that same man got up out of that bed, went back to being presiding elder and still serving. Matter of fact, I saw him last week at the annual conference and he reminded me. He said, I remember when y'all came in the hospital and prayed for me. I didn't know you were there, but when I got up and woke up the next day, the doctors told me they were praying for you because we didn't know what to do. My God, my God, my God, my God said I will restore you. My God, that's why I left the club. That's why I left Satan. That's why I left death so I can speak life. I can restore. Juanita got a brother that at 12 years old Satan tried to destroy had a cousin who sold liquor and he found the stash where his cousin kept his liquor so he started slipping in there and developed a drinking habit and by the time he barely made it through school Nobody expected him to do anything, to be anything. He following other folk around, headed to death every day. But some stirred up in him, and he called us one day and said, Can I come to live with you all? And we said, Yes. And he come in the house, still had his problems. He met somebody there, and for just a little while, the drinking seemed to got worse. And he didn't seem to be working with the plan. Got so bad, I got angry with him. And I told him, you got three days to pack your stuff and get up out of my house and go on back where you come from. And I walked out my living room and went to my bedroom. And God spoke to me and says, now you go right back in here and you apologize to him. <laughs> apologize to him? He doing this in my get up, go apologize to him, and tell him he can stay as long as he need to stay. I went right in there and I told him. He started laughing. I got mad. I did. <laughs> he told me he said he started laughing because he didn't know what else to do. He was so happy.
but thanks be to God that God stopped me from being stupid that young man mm, changed his life started on the work and he started telling us that what happened when you just reading the Bible and all of a sudden you find yourself running and hollering huh? then he started asking what happens when you just sitting there and all of a sudden you see visions or you go driving down the road and visions come over on your windshield and you still drive huh and then he started telling the visions and he God showed him in seven days all the way through Revelation and he had never read Revelations but as he could I he, when he started telling them I recognized them and I started writing them down and God showed him all the way through Revelation all the way to the end of the world making it new in the new city of Jerusalem coming down and the revelation stopped mm -hmm. and now he's a preacher today he went he got up went to college and he's preaching in the anointing of God he's preached right here an anointed an anointed preacher in God mm. because God brought restoration Mm. there may be somebody who won't accept Christ as their savior doors of the church are open if I were you I'd come and let him restore you back into his promises will there be one will there be one for the Lord that same brother that I told you his name is Tyrone when I had to have surgery I laid down and went to sleep when I opened my eyes I saw Juanita Jonathan, Anna, Scott and Tyrone he lived in Atlanta but he made his way there yeah, he said brother I had to come see about you mm hmm there may be somebody in your life that God wants you to help bring restoration in their life. Help them out. Mm. Mm. Let's stand all over the house. Let me thank everybody who came out yesterday and worked so hard for the uh, bazaar. Uh, let's give God a hand. A wonderful job. Wonderful job. Thank you so much. Mm. It was wonderful. I do need to announce that uh, Brother Robert Maddox uh, on yesterday morning uh, went home to be with the Lord. Uh, and so I uh, talked with the family on yesterday. Uh, we need to make arrangements. They want to have the home going service this week sometime. 
Uh, so they're trying to get a date set up with the funeral home. So let's be on alert to help them out. Probably somewhere, I'm thinking around Thursday or Friday, they're trying to do it because they want to do it before the weekend. Uh, so we're trying to see how we'll make those adjustments. So we're going to need your help uh, in being there with his family uh, as they go through this time of transition. Amen. All of us must go that way, but it's good to know that we have some place to go to. Amen. God is blessing us. Let's give the young folk another hand today for doing a marvelous job. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so bring them, bring them to Bible study. We got plenty of teachers. Bring them to Sunday school. We got plenty of teachers ready to teach. Amen. So bring them, bring them, bring them. Amen. So God is just a blessing in the, just, just the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Ah, and with that, let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. what you in God can bring restoration in your life you ought to just go and get up out of it and now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask think and imagine according to the power of God that work in us to him be glory majesty and power now henceforth and forevermore let in the name of Jesus let all of us say been asked to meet with the pastor right after this service. Uh, we'll meet you in the fellowship hall in just a couple of minutes. Amen.